you have a prepaid call from an inmate at Cabo, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for you. We are. Yeah, we fucking, uh, we were in Nellis, they had us in East L.A., man, like 20, 20 minutes from East L.A. We were like 13 years old, and we went down there. Chino Prison was sending all this, telling all the Sudenos, the young Sudenos, the Southerners, to rush all the Northerners, that they, anybody that wears red to, to rush them. So we were getting rushed in, the day, um, in, the, in there, and I got stabbed in the back of my head, and they cut me, or they cut me with a blade in my ear and shit, and, uh, um, Fucking uh, Paul Fauci was socking somebody up. He socked like two dudes up, and he had he, he kept a couple off him. But I grabbed my blue shirt, and the homie got stabbed in his head. So I grabbed I wrapped the shirt around his head, and I was holding him. And they were just kicking me all over, and I was fucking trying to swing. But I, I had the homie. I was holding him, so they wouldn't stab him no more because he he got he got stabbed a gang of time. And then my other homie, after it was done, he was like, "Hey, nothing happened to me." He lifted up his shirt, and there was kind of little holes with like little tears of the blood. I said, fool, you got, you, got, you got stabbed. He's like, what do you mean? I go, all the little dots right there, those are all stabbed. Those are all, they, they just did it with the, like a, um, uh, uh, what you call it, a uh, ice pig, one of those little ones, you know? So it looked like this, like, like, like little pop pimples, but they were actually fucking stab marks, you know? With a little bit of blood coming out. I said, the reason why it's not bleeding that much is because he probably fucking went and dug up in you a little bit, you know? He was like, all right, his name was Spanky from Gilroy's. I, I can't remember his real, real name, but Gilroy's by San, San, San Jose. And it was Spanky from Gilroy. It was Chuko from Visalia, Tulare County. It was Soldier Boy from fucking 6th Street, Radio 6 Bone, Stockton, on in, in uh, Stockton, California. It was Paul Salcido from Salinas, California. And it was Chucky from uh, San Jose. And it was uh, Joey Boy from Fresno. And uh, just a gang of other people, man, other, other names I can remember that were in it that got involved and jumped in and actually were fighting, you know. The other ones, they were like, we're Christian now. I'm like, why, why do you want to be Christian? You know, I don't I don't got nothing against God, but come on now, just because you see we're outnumbered, you're going to just try to just fucking drop out. I'm like, man, and so it only left us with like a couple homies. But they had an actual like 30 that were logged inside the computer, the, the COs, the cops or whatever. And they're like, well, there's only like 15 of them that are actually fight, though, you know? I say, well, that's because a lot of them are in the church now. That's cool, though, they're in that. I mean, I believe in a God now. But I'm starting to change my ways a little bit, too. But I I, I, I mean, uh, I still got homies back if they need me. You know, I'm, I'm not... uh. I'm not, I'm not banging them, but I mean, if somebody got swung and they want, they want to hurt one of my homies that I know, then I'm, I'm gonna help to back them up, because uh, I know they'll do the same thing for me, you know. But I ain't, I ain't like trying to be banged out and bang, gang bang or nothing. But like, if somebody has problems, like over, there's usually problems. These the major majority of the problems are usually over the phone or the showers and shit, you know. And um. Uh, I did a homie had an incident over the phone. He was just telling me about. It. I said, man, uh, I said uh, he's like I was in the right the whole time. He said I wanted to squabble them, but they, they were, there was two of them. And they didn't even want to squabble me. I said you got to kick kick back. We're trying to be a tough guy when you're when you're by yourself. You know what I mean? Wait till we come around and then and then fucking just tell us and then we'll go fucking check the situation. If we gotta do something about it, we'll do it. If not, we'll just squash it and let it go. You know? But we're not trying to start violence and we're not trying to be violent people. But if if need be, we'll have to get violent, but well, we don't need to. They're, they're, fools don't really want it like that right here, you know? I, I ain't trying to give it to nobody like that, because I know they don't want it like that. They ain't trying to bring it like that. I, I, I had a thing, I was all mad, and I sharpened up a piece, and I was like, man, I gotta flush this shit, because if I get caught with this, I want it all. And, I, and I've been I've been, I've been two years clean with no write-ups and shit, besides the one kind of dofi, do dofi, you know what I mean? But they only took 30 days of my credit. The lieutenant was like, I'm only going to take 30 because he said he hit you first. I said, well, I, just, well, I can't say I was just defending myself because I, I actually fought him and chased him down and saw a camera. So there, there wasn't much I could do about that. If I, if I didn't chase him, maybe they would have fucking dropped my own write-up. But I chased him down and started vomiting on him. He ran over for me all the way across the pier and shit. And I was like, man, this is what I seen him out in the yard today, too. I go, hey, Tony. And he looked up and he goes, oh, what's up, bad boy? And I said, you all right? And he goes, yeah, I'm all right. And I just told him, just stay your distance. I, I, you know, you did what you do, you know what I mean? I had to go back and get my, my run bags when I chased you down the tier and did what I did to you. 
but just just stay a little bit away from me because he because I told, he said I'm crazy though. I told him I know you're crazy, but you can't be doing that to different people because I guess he did that to some blacks. He he bought us some black in the shower and then the dudes by the shower and then the dudes homie uh the dudes homie uh socked him out by the uh by the stairs and shit. I guess they had a little incident. So I was like, fuck it, you know, I'm just fucking, you gotta be cool, um, Tony, his name's Tony, he's black, he's, a, he's an ex-blood from Uptown, that's what it says on my paperwork, it says ex-blood, Uptown, I said, I don't know who it was, I know, I got into it with some blood, he was from uh, Uptown, yeah, but I'm cool though, I'm just chilling, man, uh, um, I got, I got, I got a gang of stories, man, all day long, especially when, when me and Paul Salcedo were down south, they, they wouldn't give us no breaks, man. We were fighting like every day, and they didn't have no lockdown programs, so we were, we were getting in a fight and going to the hole, and they would let us out the next day. I mean, we could stab somebody up good, and, and there was... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Because there was not that many northerners, you know? So, they, uh... They didn't have no program for us, like a lockdown program, so they would they would just let us back out the hole again. We get right into it again until we got to Madison. When we got to Madison, Madison was a place that was calling the most shots for the whole institution. So they got us, and they were like, "Whoa!" When we walked in, they were like, "Whoa!" We're the ones that were fucking shooting, ordering all these hits too from Chino Prison. So we, they they were new to seeing us, and there was like eight of us, and they had us going to the back of the dorm first, and they were all in the day room having a program, and they locked the door. And all these fools went up to the window and the doors, and they were like, where you guys from? And I threw a 1-4, I threw a 14, and they were throwing up the 13, and I was like, I'm a North Daniel. I'm from, I'm, uh, I, I claim a red rag, you know, I was like, uh, I'm from up north. And they was like, oh, you're, uh, you're a North Daniel. And I was like, yeah. He said, we thought you guys were white. And I was like, no, I'm not white, bro. But, uh, yeah, they fucking, uh. They, uh, I, I watched them hand out shit during the day room. When, as soon as we got day room, they told us you guys could sit in the back rows because they were giving us the back rows because then they had assigned seats by by the inmates, not the, not the uh, COs. The, they, well, they call them youth counselors in YA, not, not correctional officers. Well, the youth counselors or the youth supervisors, whatever they call them, they, uh, they assigned us to seats in the back row. So when we were sitting in the back row, I watched this guy with a pillowcase handing all kinds of shit out, but they were trying to hide it. And I seen it, and I told my boy, Soldier Boy, they're going to get ready to hit us right now, don't trip. So like four of them got up from the second row. I watched them go to the, 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 the um, water faucet, and then one of them was drinking the water, but his hand was hell shaking. I go, they probably have him doing it, because he looks like he's kind of weak. And I said, well, they're on trip. We're just, we're, if they come in towards his back row, I'm just going to get up and start, I'm just going to get up and start shocking him, all right? And, uh, and uh, he's like, all right. So they came in the back row, and as soon as they got kind of close to me, I just jumped up out of my chair and started bombing, and then Soldier Boy was right behind me. Soldier Boy was knocking fools out, because that fool got quitters. He, he, they tried to remove him. The Northerners tried to remove him in prison, and that fool knocked out three of them. So he knocked out the dude with the, with the uh, knife that tried to stab him, and he knocked out the two bombers that were trying to bomb on him. I was like, man, you don't fuck with him. That was hella, he, he's hella on for That was, we had it bad. We had the blues when we, when we were down south. They were giving us the blues. But we had to fight for ours and, and to make a name, you know, because they were like, you guys, at least at least there's a couple of you guys that don't quit. They, they had to respect us. They were like, uh, this guy named Spuds. I can't remember where he's from. San Bernardino, IE, one of them motherfuckers. He was like, I respect you guys for fighting, man. He said, I know it's hard for you. And I said, it's hella hard. We're in gang class together. And uh, it was called Mr. Newman's class. He was a black gang member. I mean, a gang investigator or whatever the fuck he was. Gang uh, expert. And he would show us videos on 18th Street and all these dudes from Mata Sala and White Fence, the first, like one of the first gangs in L.A. White Fence and Mata Villa and uh, 18th Street and a couple other ones. Uh, that's one of the ones that were... Uh, going at it, I guess, with the Mexican Mafia because they didn't want to be Sudanians. But uh, that was all when I was younger, though, you know? I got I got war stories in prison, too, that, like, like once, but most of them were by myself when I was doing, like, removals and shit. Like, I cut a couple of people in the face, and then I, I rushed some dude in Tracy when I was, uh, he was a black Sudanian, and that fool was eye-fucking my girl at this scene. And I said, hey, what are you doing, man? And he was like, um... Where are you from? And I was like, what you, it don't matter where I'm from. What are you doing? He's 
like, man, I'm looking at your bitch, and I just bob the boom, and then we start chucking up, man, 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 man. And I was fucking that fool up, hella good. I was fucking up, I was hella proud of myself, because that fool was hella big. He was a big black dude, but he was a Sudanio. I, I thought he was like a blood or crip or something. I didn't know he was in a Mexican gang. But as soon as he went back to his, to his, uh, they let him go back to his dorm, my homies from the north side of San rushed him and started fucking him up. And they were like, that's where the homie is here. You don't, don't fuck with him. He's a little ass dude. I was a little littler than, and he was like, oh. they were like, you fuck with the little homie. He's going to get off on you too, but we're going to get off on you as well. And his homies were like, don't, 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 uh, be fucking, uh, Whatever you're doing, don't do that no more because the North are going to... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Now, like the North are going to have issues with us. And they were up north, you know, so they were, they, were kind of, they were kind of outnumbered. I mean, there's a lot of spots where there's a lot of Serenios that are up north. But I, at Tracy, we were, there was a lot of, of northerners, big northerners, especially on the reception side. I've been on the reception side, too. That's where I was at when I fought that dude. And then the, the CEO that I don't like was like, I wish I was there. I would have been spraying Toro. That's my last name. He's like, I would have been spraying Toro on his face with mace. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, this motherfucker. And cause he, he told my girl, you, you shouldn't wait for him. He's, he's getting in trouble. He's going to be doing a long time in here. And I said, the next time you say something like that to my girl, there's going to be an issue. You don't need to talk to nobody's visitors and tell them anything that's going on about anything. You know what I'm saying? You, that, ain't, that ain't your fucking job, bro. I, I was going to get the lieutenant and tell the sergeants and them that he that what he did, you know, what he was trying to do. And then I, I bumped into him on the street. After I, I was cool with him after a while, then I bumped into him on the streets. And he was like, he called me first. And I looked back and we were at Nordstrom's. And uh, it was a correction officer. And he was like, what are you doing? And I held up a hand. I held up some keys and shit with the big fucking, uh, like the big car key that you put in the BMW. I said, this is what I'm doing right here. And he started laughing. He's like, oh, you got a BMW? And I was like, yeah. And I was like, man, I'm doing good, man. I live with my girl. She owns her own house and car and all, everything, man. Uh, yeah, everything's straight. But uh, I then I bumped into some other show and that fool tried to act stupid. I was going to get off on him, but I didn't. He, he was like, uh, I go, you a CEO? And he had a, a great dress on. And he was like, doesn't it look like it? And I, I told my girl, hold up right here, man. And I was going to the truck. And I was like, I'm tripping, bro. <laughs> I was to the truck. I was like, oh, no, nah, bad boy, you're in a quick bag, fool. You're tripping. I was like, you're trying to take it to owner level. I was, I was like, man, these motherfuckers, man, these motherfuckers be telling their wife. Because I, I, I got friends that are CEOs that, that, are, that work for prison. I, I know a couple of them that do drugs and shit. They just, hey, oh, they just busted a girl with the, um, she had a slit in her, you know, when her p- that? Yeah. Yeah, she had a slit right there, like a cut open, and she was at the inmate's plucker because, because she had her suit ripped open in the middle, in her middle of her, like where her crotch is at. And she got caught fucking inmates and shit. So they were boning her and shit, and then she got caught, so that went her job. Hey, bad boy, yeah, you, but you, I, you, I could, you, oh man. I have 60 seconds remaining. Hey, yeah. bad boy, you, you want you want to get a give a shout out to your people or anybody, man? With because we only yeah, got Yeah, I want to give minutes. a shout out to my homeboys and my my friends and my my family, my loved ones, to my semi and may my dad rest in peace. And hey, all my homies out there rest in peace and uh, just just stay stay clean, stay strong and positive. That's about it.